Hello, John. How are you? Well, I'm fine, yes. You okay? Okay, just fine. So, let's go back in time. Almost three decades ago, Northampton City, huh? Yeah, it's, it's an unlikely place for about that Bauhaus to come from. Mm. It's like a very quiet, dead town in England. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Very, very dark place, huh? In a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's actually a really boring, yeah. nowhere town. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And what about Peter Murphy nowadays? He's on tour, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, and he, he, does he still live in Istanbul? Mm, yeah. It's an interesting place to end up. But what a really important band, and it's I think, intended to be written out of musical history. Mm -hmm. When you see people write about that period, they write about a lot of the post-punk bands. Mm -hmm. and they tend to miss out the bands like Bauhaus or Killing Joke who have been, become really influential yeah. and really important groups. Yeah, yeah. So when, when they reformed yeah. about five years, was it five years ago they reformed? I went yeah. to see them play in Manchester, it was a fantastic gig. Mm. Great gig. Some bands reform and they're not that good, but Bauhaus when they reformed, in some ways it all sounded better than they did when they were actually going at the time. <laughs> I'm sure. John, do you remember Dali's car? A fantastic yeah. record. Yeah, Peter Murphy and Mick Cannon from Japan, eh? Yeah, great record. That's the other thing about Bauhaus. They've done so many great side projects as well. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like Love and Rockets, huh? Yeah, and that, that was and that was a really successful record. Didn't they get to like uh, number two in the American charts? It's, it's, it's funny how it's, it's. I mean, quite a really major group in a lot of ways, and uh, like just pushed aside, forgotten about it because they get termed gothic, which in England is always used as a put down. Uh, when people write about things, yeah. But when you go to Europe, it's like a really massive scene, and you go to—I mean, you go to Greece, and it's like a big goth scene in Greece, isn't there? <laughs> it's black clothes. That's what you like about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what about the the gothic music scene nowadays, John? Um, well, when you go to goth clubs in Europe, they tend to play a lot of that dark way stuff, don't they? The kind of like goth cross techno. Mm, and, yeah. Um, I mean, and it's also kind of crossed into the metal scene as well, so you get people like Marilyn mm, Manson, mm. who's not, who would never term himself a goth, but very much in that tradition. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's kind of gone over that way as well, so you get a lot of kids hanging around British city centres, uh, kind of like metal goth crossover. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and it's kind of, there's always like a little mini scenes like horror goth, and there's, there's always goth, there's still always a goth club or goth bar though, in every city you go to in Europe. So, uh, it's definitely a scene that exists. Yeah, of course. John, can we say that Bauhaus was the missing link, maybe, between Screaming Jake Hawkins, Screaming Lord Satch, you know, to Glam Rock, to David Bowie, Mark Bolan? In, in a sense, yeah. In a I, sense, I think, yeah. yeah. I think Glam Rock was a, a big influence on, on most of the goth bands. Mm. I think goth in, in a way was a, a Glam Rock, like a black, like a, a dark clo version of Glam Rock. But uh, Bauhaus wore their uh, Glam Roots on their sleeves obviously with the cover version so you can, you can definitely see it in there but there's a lot of other influences in their sound it's like that dub thing that goes on in there all that space of dubs in there and certain post punks in there as well they were definitely uh, parallel to uh, Public Image and Metal Box which is important records about the same time so you can see this kind of cross pollination of ideas mm. but they kind of kept they did keep and did keep a certain aspect of that glam thing in there But you see the glam thing in it, and, and, and Adam and the Ants and the groups who were not strictly goth, but they were kind of coming out of the same kind of place early on. Yeah. Okay, John, thank you very, very much for your time. It's always a pleasure to have you here, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.